Uh, hello, everyone. Um, it's me, Lena. I hope everyone made it home or is doing well. Um, I will be presenting my art uh, reading, which is The Petrified Man by Eudora Waltley. Walty? I can't really pronounce things. <laughs> I can't really pronounce things too well, so if I stutter a lot, I'm going to try to edit that out, so, sorry. Laura Waltley, well T, well T. she was born and raised in Jackson, Mississippi, uh, it, from, which is where she lived from April 13th of 1909 until July 23rd of 2001. Um, she was a short story writer, um, a novelist, and a photographer. Um, she went to Mississippi State College for Women, and then she transferred into the University of Wisconsin, which is where she graduated in the year 1929. Um, she photographed during the Great Depression, and then after that, she started to write, and her story, she focused on intimate social interactions, and her words combined humor and psychological acuity, equity, Mom, is it acuity or equity? I don't even know how to say that. I don't know either. Never mind. Um, sorry, I was asking my mom how to pronounce that because I forgot. Um, so, the Petrified Man. It took place in a hair salon that was owned by Leota, um, who's like the main beautician, hairdresser. And uh, we start off with her commenting on one of her customers' dandruff that she has in her hair, and her customer is Mrs. Fletcher. Um, and she fears that it could be more than just dandruff. Um, and on page 23, I'm going to put pages right here. Um, on page 23, uh, Leota heard from one of the other beautician Th Thelma's customers that her client, Mrs. Fletcher, was pregnant. Which Mrs. Fletcher was not too keen on because she is pregnant, but she doesn't want anyone to know about it. So she's like, how do people know? Like, I didn't say anything. What's going on? So, um, yeah, so she's mad about that. Um, and I guess, supposedly, your hair falls out when you're pregnant. So that's, that's horrifying, I guess. Um, she's not, she's not really happy about that. And then she's like, oh, this, like, she's dead to know, like, the person, whoever exposed her like that. Um, so she's mad and she, like, starts, like, profusely asking Leota, who said that, like, so she can talk to her or whatever. Um, and, uh, Mrs. Pike has a son named Billy Boy. Um, and on page 25, we see a strong, like, talk of denomination over men in a relationship. She doesn't want to have a baby. She won't have a baby. It's not about his decision. It's about her decision. And, um... And then on this, in this section, uh, we also see how Leota kind of spills the beans on who told Thelma and everyone about uh, Mrs. Fletcher being pregnant, who is Mrs. Pike, um, who is the woman who has a son named Billy Boy. So I kind of like said it prematurely, but uh, Mrs. Pike is uh, one of the new um, renters in, Miss, in Leota's apartment. Uh, she moved in recently, well, in that time, during that day, uh, with her husband, Mr. Pike, and Mr. Pike and Mr., well, Leota's man's Fred, um, they go out and go fishing. God knows what they're doing, but everyone knows that they're not actually fishing. Um, and they just do their thing, and this is, like, the start of, we start to see Mrs. Um, Fletcher starting to get jealous of Mrs. Pike um, because of all the stories and all the crazy adventures that her and Leota have gone on. On the next page um, is when we talk about when uh, Mrs. Pike and Leota saw her when she was at the store with her husband and she was like, oh, she looks pregnant. And then we go into the story about the freak show. The freak show, um, I guess, comes to town and Mrs. Pike was like, we gotta go. Sounds fun, and Leota says nothing bad about Mrs. Pike. Like, she just glorifies her to the max. Like, and this sort of, like, praise and stuff is 
making Mrs. Fletcher really mad and kind of jealous because she's like, well, how is this woman, like, she just got here and you're already, like, best friends with her and you've known me for how long? And bleh, Jealousy, man. Kills. So she talks about the freak show and on page 26 and, um, about how, like, there was, like, these twins in a bottle, like, in a jar, like, all the weird things that were going on, and Mrs. Fletcher was like, well, why would you like that? Well, like, why would you find that cool? Like, did Mrs. Pike like it? And she was like, yeah, Mrs. Pike loved it, actually. Um, so that's great. Um, Mrs. Pike was having a great time, and so was Leota, and Mrs. Fletcher was just not having it. And at this point, I'm already, like, laughing while I'm reading it, because, like, their accents are just, like, well, honey, and, like, I, like, I say honey, but I'm from, like, Boston, Mass., so I'm like, honey, like, I don't, I have a different accent than that, but I think it's definitely, the way they talk makes it a lot funnier, because then I can, like, imagine how they sound, like, if I was, like, watching them instead of reading them, um, because I'm more of a visual person, personally. And then, uh, they talked about the twins, the conjoined twins on page 27 that were at the freak show. And how they, um, were born because of two cut like, first cousins, you know, and then they were born. And, um, then they are like, well, um, my husband, like, Mrs. Fletcher was like, well, Mr. Fletcher and I are not keen. Kin? Kin? I don't know, they used a fancy term for it, but they're not related, moral of the story. And, um, Leona was like, yeah, me and Fred aren't related, I don't think. So that's good. That's great. It's good to clarify when you're related to your partner. So then, on this page, we also see the mention of the title. I like. I think it's so funny in like movies and books when the title is like referenced in some sort of way. So in this book, they said, "Oh, then we saw the petrified man," and I was like, "That's the name of the the book." So <laughs> exciting. So the petrified man is a 20, 42 year old man who's been frozen since he was nine, quote unquote. Um, but I think that he's has a medical condition. I'm gonna put the name of it right here because I can't pronounce it. But it's pretty much when, over time, when your body starts to harden and like your um, it's called your like joints turn to bone, so you like physically can't move anymore. So I think that's what it is. I'm not really sure, but. During that time, um, I think this book was made, it was more of like, he's a freak. The American Horror Story just talked about um, people that were seen as different from society and how they were just treated like freaks and they were trying to make the best of it versus like letting it really get to them. So they were like trying to embrace their differences and stuff and you can see how um, Leoto was really fascinated and Mrs. Pike was really fascinated about like their differences and stuff um but mrs fletcher was not having it she was like well my husband does workouts he does exercises every day so he should be fine and then leota was like well fred does it so oh well i guess there's worse things to worry about um i don't know the way leota just like her mentality is just so funny throughout this whole thing because mrs fletcher's so stuck up and I'm just like, whoa, whoa, take it easy there, woman. But Miss Fletcher just like throughout this whole time just keeps growing more and more jealous of um, the relationship that Leota and Mrs. Pike has. Um, and then on page 27, 29, we talk about fortune tellers and how Mrs. Pike got her fortune read and about how there was going to be some sort of money coming into the future. And then, of course, Leota like went and she was like, this is this is what's gonna happen, like, I believe it, like, I totally, like, I'm all for it. Miss Fletcher was like, no, just, of course, she's gonna deny it and just not be about it. She's honestly such a buzzkill, like, I get you're jealous, but, like, little, little woman. She was just, like, she's just trying to, like, really one-up herself to Mrs. Pike and, like, trying to make, glorify herself because Leota isn't glorifying her. It's not just she's glorifying Mrs. Pike. So, page 30, Fletcher is really being salty about how she's treating Leota. Um, but I had to read, like, 
three times because this is this was like a week after, so like her bump is uh, Miss Fletcher's like bump is being more noticeable now. Well, not like crazy noticeable, but like a little bit, I guess, if you really focus on it, it may it sound like. And um, I had to read this part like three times because she had to say she just kept referencing her bump to like it, like it, and I was like, what is, what is it? Like, what is the it? And then I was like, oh, she's pregnant. That's the it. So. That took a little bit longer than I thought, but, um, but yeah, so she's just been super, like, like, oh, do you know it now? Like, just being super salty, which is totally unacceptable, um, but yeah, here we talk about Leota and how she's really starting to believe, um, the fortune teller, and it's kind of, like, letting that control her decisions a little bit, um, and on page 33, um, <laughs> took took me by surprise. This it just hit out of nowhere. We find that um so uh Leota was trying to be nice to her new renties, so she like had this place all nice and like set up and she like put these magazines out and like did all these nice things but that she was like, Well they didn't say thank you, so like what the heck? So after that she noticed that Miss Pike was looking at one of the magazines and all of a sudden she like gasped she's like oh my god like this is crazy and then they all ran over and she turns out turns out the guy in the magazine that was like wanted for like doing stuff with like four women for like 500 bucks um was actually the man that she saw at the freak show uh the petrified man and turns out they actually lived like like next to the he was like there were he was one of their neighbors so that's crazy um so actually fun fact the name of the petrified man which we find out is mr petri petai petri Pet something it, if you translate it, it actually means rock so like full circle right there um <laughs> yeah that's cool um but yeah, so they actually found out that he was the man that did that stuff to those women, which they later called him in and got the money for it. And, um, so yeah, and <laughs> Miss uh, Leota was really sad because she was like, that magazine has been sitting there for months, and I could have just opened it up and realized I knew him, and that I could have made $500, but instead this woman who just got here a week ago did that, and now she's got the money, so... Oh well. Read your magazines, kids. Which is actually funny because it also like references back to the fortune teller telling Mrs. Pike that she was gonna get into some sort of money. Five hundred dollars. I guess that's a lot, but that's the money. So look at that. Another three sixty. So we're at seven twenty right now in terms of full circles. <laughs> that was a bad joke. So on page thirty five, um, we get another sense of the nuts that were referenced back in the beginning. Um, Leota had a bunch of old nuts in her bag. And in this part, the little Mrs. Pike's son, Billy Boy, was eating them. And she was like, well, that's not nice. And, like, him and Mrs. Fletcher literally, like, tag-teamed and, like, smacked him in the ass. Um, which I'm sure Mrs. Fletcher loved because she finally got to have some sort of revenge on Mrs. Pike by getting out on, like, by beating the crap out of her son. And then everyone started to notice, and, like, a new customer came in that she saw. It was, yeah, it was a whole thing. And then after he got his ass handed to him on 36, he ended it off by yelling at them, If you're so smart, why ain't you rich? And there's that. Um, that's that. 15 pages of that. Petrified man goodness. Um, so I thought it was a really good read. I thought it was really funny. Um, I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I got to do this for my reading. Um, and here are some questions. I thought it would be fun just to ask. Like, do you believe in fortune tellers? Do you think like they're legit? Do you think it's all bu like bullshit? Basically. Um, I don't know. I got my tarot card. Like, I've never had a fortune teller, but I have like a tarot card reading, which like. I guess it's like the same thing or similar to it, it just involves cards. And personally for me, it worked. Like it whatever it was although it was like super vague, 
Like, I felt like it kind of worked. I don't, I kind of gave me a glimpse as to what was going to happen, but nothing crazy. Um, so that's my first question. So do you believe in fortune tellers? Do you think that if there was not, like, an accent written in the and this like from the characters then would have been more or less funny i think it added a little extra something because <sighs> so sick of reading just like proper english like i want some fun you know i need some variety so i thought it was some nice good variety in terms of language um so final question why do you think we never got to actually meet mrs pike um a i think Mrs. Fletcher probably would have kicked her ass, but, like, so I kind of wish we got to, like, really have her come in and, like, talk and stuff and interact with not only Leota but Mrs. Fletcher so she can make her own opinion of him. Her. Her. Own opinion of her. So, yeah. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, comment below what you think. Uh, enjoy the weather. It is lovely. I mean, my... I'm not wearing socks, so I'm, my feet are freezing, but it's beautiful outside. Um, enjoy the weather, get out, and uh, have a great rest of the semester. Bye.